Hi everyone and welcome back to The Rooftop, the home of good news worth shouting about. Sharing positive stories about issues that matter and campaigns that make a difference. I'm Tom York and this is episode three of Rooftop TV. Now, who doesn't love a great film? And while you've got the Oscars, the BAFTAs and the Golden Globes, have you heard about the Charity Film Awards? Well, last week, hundreds of charities across the UK came together to celebrate the best and most successful charity films that have been made over the past year. Here with the story, I'm pleased to welcome back Simon Francis, editor of The Rooftop. And we're also joined by an extra special guest today, Madeleine Johnson, who is campaigns director at the Charity Film Awards. Hi, Simon. Hi, Madeline. Thanks for joining us. Hey. Hi, Tom. So, yeah, if you want to kick off, Simon, just talk a little bit about the awards and then, uh, Madeline, we can we can ask you some questions to hear all about it. Yeah, so um, Charity Film Awards, well, we've been involved with the Charity Film Awards as a media partner um, as uh, the rooftop um, for a couple of years. And the social enterprise that funds the rooftop campaign collective has also supported um, the development of the, the Charity Film Awards. So uh, we think it's an absolutely amazing um, event. Uh, this year is a virtual event for the first time, obviously. Um, and, you know, the films um, are just stunning. I'm, I'm a judge, and so every year I have the pleasure of, of watching some of the amazing films that are produced by, by charities uh, right around the country. And I think, you know, the the winner um, last year um, from Trial Bereavement UK, just, you know, every time you see that film, it brings a tear to the eye. And um, I think we'll hear about the winner from this year, and I think you'll see there's sort of some similarities there. That's great. Thanks, Simon. Um, so, Madeline, do you want to t tell us a little bit more about the, the, the awards and obviously the virtual ceremony this year? So, um, yeah. So Charity Film Awards is in its fourth year this year and it's our, it was our first virtual ceremony last Tuesday evening. Uh, in the time of the four years, we've seen 1,600 films enter and the whole aim of Charity Film Awards is to demonstrate how vital a tool video is, that it's the most important tool in the charity's marketing toolkit. So how do you go about choosing the winners? You said you've got 1,600 entries from the past uh, four years. How do you go about choosing from all of those films uh, which is the best and, and which wins the award? Sure. So it's a two-step process. So it's free to enter. The charities enter at the first stage, usually towards the end of the summer, and this year we had 400 enter. And then the next really important stage of the process is that they get their supporters to vote on their films. And it's a really simple process of just clicking on the film and voting. And the reason that that's so amazing is that their supporters can then share that they've voted for that film via social media and we get a lot of excitement and buzz around that. But even more importantly, it means that their films are being seen by more people and usually at least up to double, if not more, people see their films. So that's a really, really vital stage. Then the next stage is that those who have garnered the most votes from their supporters make it through to the shortlist. And we then have an expert panel of judges with some incredibly amazing people from the world of media, politics, business, and the charity sector itself, who then have the tough task of evaluating those films. And those are the people who become the winners on the night. That's fantastic. And, um, I mean, you obviously you have different categories for charities of different sizes because obviously some charities produce great films but may not have the same budgets as the, the larger charities. So how do, you, how do you cover those in your categories? Absolutely. That's a really, really crucial point. We 
the categories are based primarily on turnover so that we are always ensuring that, ca that charities of the same size are competing with charities of the same size. We have 10 turnover categories from very small to quite substantial. And we also have a charity film of the year, which is the ultimate accolade. And we reward the people who got the highest number of votes overall with the People's Choice Film of the Year. But this year, we also, in order to, to give even more opportunity to celebrate, we added the corporate cause category, which recognizes businesses who put purpose before profit. And also, because everyone was so amazingly engaged with the campaign and getting their supporters to vote, we awarded a People's Choice winner, bronze and silver, in every single turnover category as well. So we had a really wonderful collection of amazing films that were celebrated. That's fantastic. And obviously, it sounds like a really level playing field, so everybody gets a chance to um, have their film celebrated. Um, and I guess. Sorry, go ahead, Simon. Yeah. I have a really uh, amazing point that I um, wanted to bring up is that uh, I think, uh, Madeline, you're right, I'm right in saying that the, the films that win actually go into the British Film Institute's archive. Is, is that right? That's absolutely right. We're very, very fortunate to have a, a partnership with the BFI. And so all of the winning films go on to be part of the BFI's non-fiction library and that's just an incredible accolade sometimes for, for films that have only been seen in one other burst of a campaign so really an amazing reward and recognition for those those winners. That's fantastic I guess um, on that note we'd like to show a, a short clip um, of the, the winner of the overall Film of the Year Award. Um, it was created by Carers UK in partnership with British Gas, and it's called Two Sides of the Story. So, take a look. I don't know how I'd feel about actually opening up to someone in depth. I don't wanna burden them when I don't have to. I've spent how many years as a kid and I felt like they've been taken away. And now, even when I'm 20 and I'm just making my way into adulthood, I feel like it's still affecting me quite a lot. Thinking, oh, no one understands me, feeling very alone. Feeling very, um, just on my own. <laughs> oh, I love you so much. I love you very much. Like I'm such a bad friend. No, you're not. You're I just not. felt like if you wanted to talk to me about it, you would. No. And it's, it's a hard topic. <laughs> I know. My impression of you. Oh, Hello. <laughs> so as you can see there, the, the, the film aims to show the impact that caring can have on people's lives and, and really raise awareness about the importance of carers' mental health, which some may say that it's not always considered in uh, in those types of situations. So so Madeline, how how did you feel about that um, that film winning the award? It's a, a hugely moving piece of filmmaking and, and part of it is just its simplicity and its, its raw, powerful honesty. Uh, I believe particularly at the moment we have a huge number of people in the community who are caring in one way or another and I think that it's extraordinarily important to acknowledge that. I think this film does it amazingly poignantly. I think it's a, an incredible charity film of the year and congratulations again to Carers UK and British Gas. Yeah, huge congratulations there and I know the film probably at the moment is going to resonate even more with carers and their families and their friends with the, 
the ongoing COVID-19 lockdown. So um, it's it's really fantastic and it, it moved me when I watched it. So um, yeah, really happy that it was the, the overall winner. Now, another winner on the night um, included a short film by um, Scottish Environment Link um, calling for more resources to help um, protect Scotland's nature and landscape. Here's a short clip. So Madeline, that's another example of a lovely film there that won an award. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that one? Well, we think this is not only very obviously an incredibly beautiful piece of filmmaking, uh, drawing attention to the incredible natural resources in Scotland and why it's so incredibly important to conserve them. But one of the other things we really love about this is that we believe this demonstrates that these charity films aren't necessarily what you think they will be. You're potentially not expecting an amazing nature film, but it's equally important to draw attention to that cause. And I think at the moment we're all feeling like we'd really love the opportunity to go outside and enjoy Scotland's wilderness and, and the UK's bountiful countryside. So it makes it all the more a pleasure to watch. I also really, really loved one of the comments on the night from one of our judges who said, and there are otters. I didn't think there were going to be otters tonight, uh, which I couldn't agree with more. <laughs> yeah, everybody loves an otter, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, the, the film it was fantastic and the cinematography, yeah, out of this world. So really happy that that, that won an award too. So um, yeah, thanks, thanks Madeline for joining us. Um, so viewers, you can watch all of the films that um, were featured in the Charity Film Awards. If you just head over to the website, charityfilmawards.com, they're all there and you can watch them, read all about them and share them with anyone that may not have seen them so yeah thanks madeline fantastic thanks for having me guys and uh, congratulations to all our winners and all of the finalists that's great thank you so another story we covered this week is about how a construction industry charity is finding a way to help construction workers look after their mental health during the covid19 lockdown um, over to you, Simon. I know you wrote this story, so perhaps you can tell us a little bit more about it. I think actually it might be my colleague Ian who wrote this one up. Oh. Um, he actually <laughs> has, uh, has, has actually quite a lot of interest in mental health stories. He's a professional coach himself. So uh, amongst the team of, of writers that we've got working for The Rooftop, um, Ian does tend to cover a lot of stories on mental health. So if people have stories that they'd like to share on the subject, then please do get in touch with us. Um, the yeah, the Lighthouse Club is the charity behind this um, uh, scheme, which basically is helping construction workers with their mental health at the moment. I think obviously a lot of people on furlough, um, a lot of people who are self-employed, and obviously there's financial problems, but also there's there's mental health problems associated with not being at work and and being potentially isolated or, or by yourselves if they live alone or kind of in, in a situation they're not used to. So. Um, the Lighthouse Club's teamed up with a software firm to, to basically put together a series of, of webinars and workshops um, for people who are who are you know feeling that they might need some extra support. These are a series of lunchtime workshops and actually um, part of a much wider helpline that exists provided by Lighthouse Club um, for construction workers to um, get the support that they need. So I think you know yeah an area that we just sort of felt you know don't normally hear anything about support for construction workers and yet there are some great charities out there like Lighthouse Club that are, are doing that role. Yeah that's fantastic really important work there Simon. Um, so our final story today um, is about community groups in Dumfries and Galloway Simon. I think they're looking to find new ways to support um, some of the most vulnerable people in society during the COVID-19 lockdown. Yeah, absolutely. So um, this is this is work by Foundation Scotland, who basically have uh, been administering emergency grants 
um, to small community groups in Dumfries and Galloway. Um, they've awarded £17,000 of grants to help these small, really small groups um, with uh, kind of the, the current uh, crisis. And, and I think what's, what's really phenomenal is that they've managed to get the process down to 72 hours from application to then payment of the grant. So this is really fast money getting to community groups that really need it really quickly at the moment. So, you know, congratulations to uh, Foundation Scotland and to, to their funders for, for sort of making this happen. One of the groups that's benefited um, is a small community cafe in Stranra, and they've been able to um, provide and deliver meals to um, shielding people and people who are isolated and really need that support. So, you know, some some really amazing community work that's happening as a result of um, the, the coronavirus um, crisis. Great, thanks Simon, that's uh, really important stuff. Um, that's all we've got time for uh, today, but before we go, Simon, can you just give us a little taster of stories that you're working on next week? Yeah, so next week, really, really fascinating story, actually, about um, a new project um, that's going to be uh, launched again in, in Scotland, um, looking at how um, you can better support children who have been victims or witnesses of uh, serious crime. Um, and they've uh, got a new model that will hopefully help support these kids uh, based on something that is quite widespread in Iceland and Scandinavia, um, but is coming to, to Scotland uh, and then hopefully to the, the rest of the UK. Um, so more on that and also on a, a, a lovely story about um, a kind of a, a meal provision for homeless people in Doncaster. Uh, so lots of stories. Um, we are getting, you know, so many great stories through. We can obviously only feature a few, um, but if you do have a story um, for us, then please do get in touch with us at editor at the rooftop dot news. And that's editor at the rooftop dot news. And we'll try our best to publish as many as we can on uh, the website, um, which is the rooftop dot news, and also on our, our Facebook, Twitter and Instagram profiles. That's fantastic. Thanks, Simon. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. I'm Tom York. He's Simon Francis. And once again, thanks to Madeline Johnson for joining us. And this is The Rooftop, the home of good news worth shouting about. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>